Recently, my trusty old 2.1 speaker system from Logitech rightfully quit its job after 8 years of regular use. So obviously I salvaged a couple of useful components and also got myself a new replacement, which are those set 200 Logitech speakers. I have to say that I do like the overall design and their promised technical specs should fulfill my modest requirements. But as soon as I plugged in the 5V power supply and turned up the volume, some enormous bullshit was about to begin. But firstly, let me get a better microphone. As you can hear, there is a noticeable hum when no audio source is connected to the speaker system, which is not desirable to begin with, but it gets much worse. Because when I connect an audio source, the hum gets even louder and is clearly hearable during music playback as well. And no, adjusting the so-called bass control pretty much changes nothing. But since there exist so many good reviews for those speakers, mine have to be defective, right? Well, we're about to find out in this episode of Fix It. Let's get started. First off, I removed 8 small screws from each speaker and additionally the potentiometer nuts from the main control speaker in order to open them both up. One detail I immediately noticed is that there is only one active driver in each speaker. The second one is only a passive radiator which can indeed improve the overall sound quality but it kind of seems to me like false advertisement. But nevertheless, I then slowly and carefully removed the amplifier board and asserted that the overall good quality of the solder joints should not influence the functionality. So it was time to power up my function generator in order to apply a 1kHz sine wave to the audio input so that I can track it in the circuits. And let me tell you that this is no fun at all without a schematic. But through a decent amount of probing and continuity testing, the function principle was rather easy to figure out. Firstly, the audio signal's amplitudes can be adjusted by the volume potentiometer, which acts like a voltage divider. Afterwards, the left audio signal connects to pin 2 of this KS4558IC. And even though I did not find an official datasheet, the IC seems to be a dual op amp IC, which most of the time feature the same pinout. So I checked the output pin and recorded a non-inverted amplified sine wave with a DC offset. And the bass control does slightly influence the gain of this op amp configuration. This output voltage then feeds into the second IC of the amplifier board, the CS8563S, which appears to be a 2x 4.5W class D amp, which directly controls both of the speakers. In a nutshell, it is not that complicated, but the question still remains where the buzzing comes from. Well, not really. Right at the start I noticed that the ground pin of the 3.5mm jack is not connected to the ground potential of the amplifier circuit. So I tried to fix this by using a small piece of wire to connect those reference voltages together. And guess what? It immediately removed all the humming and the music playback from my smartphone finally sounds decent. And without this trick, I would not have been able to record the signals with my oscilloscope in such a manner. Anyway, while I restore the initial state of the speakers, let me tell you that this was some class 1 bullshit. And I'm not entirely sure how a completely functional amp board from those speakers established my missing connection. But at last, my speakers worked the way I wanted them to work when I first unboxed them. Which is actually pretty ridiculous when you think about it. I hope you liked this video and learned something new as well. If so, don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Consider supporting me through Patreon to keep such videos coming. Stay creative and I will see you next time.